some of you have heard this story before, so I apologise. Um, I'd lit a candle. <laughs> I had the window open. I had the curtains drawn. You know, I was trying to get that really spiritual feeling. It was a nice summer night in Melbourne, as summer as it can get in Melbourne. And uh, I was sitting there thinking, this is it, you know, this is the night. I'd been, you know, investigating all the spiritual proofs, all the scientific proofs about the fact that the mountains are the pegs, about, you know, how, how the, the embryo develops inside, uh, you know, the woman, all these amazing proofs, but I still needed that little push. It was like I was on the edge of a cliff, I was ready to jump, I just needed a push. So I was sitting there, it was very quiet. I was reading Quran and I stopped. I said, Allah, this is my moment. This is the time I'm about to jump into Islam. All I need is just a sign. Just a little sign, nothing huge, maybe a bolt of lightning. <laughs> you know, maybe half the house could fall down or something, you know, just, just small. It's small for you, man. You, you created the earth, come on. So I sat there. I was waiting for the candle to start lighting up to four metres high like in the movies. And I go, OK, go. And subhanAllah, nothing, absolutely nothing happened. I was really disappointed, to be honest. So I sat there and I said, Allah, this is your chance. I'm here. I'm not going nowhere. I'll give you another chance. Okay, maybe you're busy. You know, I know it's daytime over the other side of the world. There's a whole lot of stuff going on. Maybe this time it could just be like a car backfiring. You know, something small. All right, the half the house, the candle. Let's forget that. A bird could fart outside. I don't care. Just anything. So I said, okay, go. And subhanAllah, absolutely nothing happened. And I mean, I couldn't have even said, oh, that was it. That, that creep just then in the wall, that was it. Absolutely nothing happened. I was really disappointed. I was gutted. I, I was sitting there thinking, this is it, you know. This was my last chance, Islam. And, and I really, I haven't found it. I pulled back the Quran. I, I turned back to where I was reading. SubhanAllah, the very next verse on the next page. For those of you who ask for signs, have we not shown you enough already? Look around you. Look at the stars. Look at the sun. Look at water. These are the signs for the people of knowledge. SubhanAllah. I threw the doona over my head and I, I pretended I was asleep. I was that scared because I couldn't believe how arrogant I'd been to want my own specific sign when all the signs had been there for me all along. The fact that we have this world, the fact that there is this creation, these are the signs for all of us. The next day I decided this is it, I'm becoming a Muslim. I've been investigating uh, Islam now for probably about six months, to be honest. I went in and I said to myself, this is it, I'm going to make shahada. I had no idea what I had to say, I had no idea what the words were. It was probably close to Isha prayer, so it would have been, you know, seven, eight o'clock at night. Um, I went in and, and I couldn't believe it, there was about a thousand people at the mosque. I thought, subhanAllah, look at this religion. Look at how strong they are. It was the first night of Ramadan. <laughs> <laughs> Ramadan Muslims. <laughs> so I sat there and I was very nervous, I must admit. I got up and this person's going to me, you've got to say these words, bro, Ash Hadu. I'm going, what? Ash what? <laughs> Can't I just say it in English? No, they say, no, you've got to say it in Arabic. And I thought, looked out over the sea of beards that I could see in front of me, and I thought, if I get these words wrong, I'm a dead man. Again, I had this fear, you know? And they were staring at me, and I don't know if you know this, but Australians can't stare. Lebanese people can stare. <laughs> so I was sitting there. I was very scared. I got up, and subhanAllah, as soon as I started to say the words, all fear went out of my mind. It felt as though a shower was inside my head and someone had just turned on the cold tap. Felt like I'd been flushed clean. I said the words and I wasn't expecting so many brothers to come up and yell Takbir Allahu Akbar and start kissing me and hugging me. Now I'd never been kissed by that many men in my life. <laughs> But it was a beautiful day, I must admit. And that day was the day that I had more brothers than I could ever uh, ever imagine, more sisters as well. But um, 
I guess since that day I've never looked back. My family, I think, initially were very worried that uh, I was going to be, I guess, a little bit weird towards them. That they thought that I was going to break out the AK-47s and the grenades. <laughs> But they realised, I think, soon that, that this religion was actually making me a better person. Prior to Islam, you're not going to believe it, I had a mohawk. <laughs> I did. I had, uh, I'm not going to show you any photos. Um, I had army greens. I had the Metallica t-shirt. I had the cherry docks. I was shocking, right? I thought I looked great, but I looked terrible. And alhamdulillah, ever since then, I look as good as I do now. No, don't laugh, please. <laughs> But my parents were the first people to actually say to me once, which really um, amazed me. They said, my father actually asked me for the Qur'an recently, which I was really happy about. Um, I always thought he'd be one of the hardest people to, to work on. But uh, he said to me, ever since you've been a Muslim, you've been a better person. You're more reliable. <laughs> I can count on you to come and pick me up if my car breaks down. Whereas before I gone, Dad, I was drinking last night. I don't know if it's still out of my system. <laughs>